Right, here we go with yet another rambling session. <laughs> well, what bothers me here, I'll well, see, what bothers me is that people claim certain things and what they claim is not true. And why is that? Well, here's a fun one for you. Some people claim, and yes, I know, my game settings are fucking beautiful. It's a bit beside the point. But, <clears throat> what some people claim is that... Holy fuck, dude. All the wickedness yes, that thanks, can video game. We will send I really needed you to be real fucking loud. Rip and, tear and have a nice cutscene. It takes a while to skip. Yes, yes, very nice. Very fucking cool. Anyhow, as I was about to say, all oh, right, by the way, shut the fuck up, video game. Yes, how about you ignore my fucking mouse controls? That's also excellent. Most fascinating indeed. Now, where was I? Ah, yes. The thing about the claims that are not really true. Fuck you. So, what do people claim that is outrageous? Well, what people claim is that You'd be fucking silly to pair, I don't know, a certain CPU with a certain class of GPU. But uh, the problem there is that it really depends on what you're looking for. I mean, if you look at the top right, you might notice a little sum-sum, which is that Yes, my frame rate is very high, but it also fluctuates. Look at that. 260 ish. 400. 260 ish. That's not good. However, I'll give you a little secret as someone that plays on a 240 hertz monitor and has done so for. Like, <laughs> Nine months or something by now. Actually, no, it's less than that. It's more like half a year, yes. As long as you're within one millisecond, it's usually okay. Hello, video game. Can we continue? Or are you just gonna fucking do me like that? There you go. All right. Now, what some people claim is that it's outrageous to pair, like, say, a strong GPU, even stronger than this one, with a weak-ish CPU. Outrageous, they claim. Well, I'm here to tell you that. It's not as outrageous as one might think. Because, as I was pointing out, it really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. If, for example, you're looking for... Fucking... <laughs> LMG Gaming. Then you're usually looking at, I don't know... Dumping settings. And high frame rates. But! Here's a fun one for you. What the fuck does dumping settings do in my case? Well, it depends on whether I'm running into a bottleneck that is, gasp, not related to my GPU. Because, here, let me show you a funny scene here. It's, there's a reason I picked this map. It's because you have uh, something like here. Yes, that's a good spot. As you can see, in this scene, 
what do we have here? Well, we have very high CPU render times and fairly low GPU render times. Now, I'd like to ask you, what does a stronger GPU let me do? Well, conveniently enough, I can answer that for you. Because this is not how my GPU actually runs. No. <laughs> I'm... F it, it was all a lie. I was underclocking it. Boom. Now, what does a stronger GPU get me? Well, surprise, surprise, my frame rate is still the same. Because it's my CPU that's the bottleneck. Or is it? I can't tell you for sure. Because I can't do anything about it. <laughs> I have a 3700X here without a couple of pins. It's real fucking nice that that happened. <clears throat> but as you can see, my GPU read the times are down. But th that doesn't mean shit. Because my frame rate, the actual fucking frame rate, remains the same. So what does a more powerful GPU in such an instance as this give me? Oh, I'll show you what it gives you. Gives you the ability to do... Ooga! Hey, look! My CPU render times are still the same, but my GPU render times have climbed. And... That means we can raise the fucking quality. Oh my. And the game looks better, but still runs the same. Now, of course, you may notice that my GPU render time, if you're paying attention, drops below the magic 240 hertz threshold. And that's true. It would be very impractical indeed. And yes, thanks. I love that position. It would be impractical to run these settings on this GPU, because, well, you see, my frame rate dips below where I would preferably have it. But the important thing here is that this is a point, not a concrete example. Because this is a 5700 XT, I mean, yeah, sure, it's a good GPU, definitely quite nice. But there are stronger GPUs, I will not argue <laughs> against that either. And if you have one of those, then you can get away with raising the settings, given that it's not the GPU that's the fucking problem. And sometimes, it simply is not the problem. Now, so so what's the big deal here? We'll see. There's a certain thing that gets overlooked all the time, and that is that what determines your performance? Well, you have the GPU that renders the frame, you have the CPU that handles all the fucking logic going on, Yes, including these floating about. It also gets all the fucking data that we need to fucking render. What the fuck is all of this shit? Yes, it pulls all of this shit and sends it off to the GPU to render. Yes, that's nice and all. But you know what else there is in this pipeline? Surprise, surprise, it's not just your CPU and GPU, no. There's a certain thing. What is that thing? It's called... Memory! <laughs> the, the, this game is using 10 gigabytes of fucking RAM. What does that mean? It means that it's fucking... Actively doing something with... Likely quite a lot of those gigabytes. That means that you need quick memory to make sure that whatever the fuck the CPU is trying to do, yeah, we can get that done faster. So then, why do I take issue with people claiming that this and that CPU is outrageous with this and this 
GPU. Well, I take issue with that because <laughs> it might look like I'm getting shit frames here, but uh, truth be told, my frames, given the fact that I'm using a 3600, yes, a 3600, the lowest and slowest end of the Zen 2s, and, uh, it's still fairly admirable, I'll give it that much. <laughs> It's quite fast. Yes, I'm using that fucking CPU and I'm still getting very good performance in pretty much all the things that I play. Now, why is that? Well, I have a fucking answer for you. And that is that if I open up my handy dandy memory setting tool that's called Ryzen Master with Zen 2 CPUs, it's pretty damn handy well what do we see we see that i'm running some <laughs> interesting memory settings <laughs> now why is that relevant well it's relevant because as i've ranted and rambled sometimes on forums <clears throat> well I just did a few tests. It's not a lot of tests, but it's still some tests. And the conclusion between those tests is that between having retard tier memory settings and complete trash auto settings, <laughs> there's actually quite the difference between What's our average frame rate? And <laughs> there's a fucking catch on the second <laughs> round of tests. Well, I intentionally looked outside of the problem scene for longer than I did initially. Which means that the average frame rate, yes, this column is actually higher than the one with the fast memory settings however due to memory <laughs> being a big factor in what your performance limits are especially what your lows are then despite the fact that I looked more at funny scenery my lows remained the same, or should I say, they remained much lower <laughs> than the fucking turbo settings. Which resulted in a pretty nice gain from average to, well, <laughs> average stutter, or <laughs> you could call low performance scenario. But here's the thing. And this is me testing Doom 5, which is actually a very nice game when it comes to performance. There are certain games that we're not gonna mention and talk too much about. Yeah, those are slightly less nice. Yeah. <laughs> and what about those games? Well, if we take a look-see, these are... two funny graphs and what's notable here is that they're running the same overall memory speed and that's important because on Zen 2 and even Zen Plus and Zen overall there's this funny thing called the fabric clock on Zen 1 and Plus it's tied completely to your memory clock which means that it struggles to go past a certain speed threshold, but <laughs> let's not get too much into that. But the important part there is that it's a significant performance boost, as the fabric is the thing that your CPU uses to communicate inside of itself, which means that raising the fabric clock 
increases the speed of your cash and shit. Thus, raising the fabric clock is sometimes even more effective than raising the raw frequency, which you can't even really do on Zen 2. <clears throat> but let's not get too far into that either. So with that covered, what we have here is a match in memory speeds. They're both running 36... 66 mega transfers per second. Yes, mega transfers. Because, surprise, surprise, DDR stands for double data rate. Ooh! <laughs> so it's <laughs> actually 1833 megahertz. Ooh! That hurts. More tangents, eh? Oh, always more tangents. But the notable thing here is that the first the p1 and p02 values here which is the lowest parts of the frame rate graph oh oh my they race well you could say considerably but it's not massively between the two settings and the main difference between those settings is that I don't actually have the thing in my bob, the exact settings between these two. However, I can tell you that it, the first one with the fucking CL14 is closer to this set of settings, while the other one is specifically. Uh, let's see. I think it's something like this, yes. And the notable thing there is that... Most, first and foremost, the fact that I'm running a much lower TRFC. Much, much lower. <laughs> and then there's all the other funny, funny settings. And funny, funny thing about that is that I have, in fact, done tests in regards to the impact of my slight crunching of all the other funny, funny settings. And it did, in fact, yield minor performance improvements, despite the fact that I kept the TRFC the same, because... I'll give you a fun one here. TRFC on Samsung Beta actually scales with voltage. And that means that saying that I'm running 1.57 <laughs> instead of 45, then I can use a significantly lower. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I can run a significantly lower TRFC and then what Ryzen DRAM calculator gives me and TRFC is the setting that controls how long do we refresh our memory when we decide to refresh it which is another setting that is not revealed on Ryzen. Yes, there's a setting for how often do we actually refresh the memory. Ugh. But it doesn't matter because we can't use it. Just know that it exists, it's pretty strong. And what happens when we change those settings is that our memory goes a little bit faster. And a little bit faster is what we want. However, <laughs> if you run much slower memory settings compared to much faster memory settings, you get very significant gains, especially on our funny little Ryzen's, due to the fabric clock thingy, my bop. Which is the main reason that the average frame rate between those two is so significantly different. 
And then there's all the funny lows thingy. And that's mostly down to the memory settings on the fucking 3000 being, let's just say, unimpressive. And yes, this is when you pause a video and look at it in case you're interested. But all I can say there is that it's, it's not good. It's about as bad as this, which is what I tested previously to determine hmm is there actually an impact between memory settings and the frames you get in doom 5 and the answer is yes there is in fact a difference it's not as massive as one might expect going from this <laughs> to this which is it's pretty massive actually it's barely a setting that isn't dropped by some stupid amount, which is a statement to how well Doom 5 actually runs. It's a good game, it runs quite well too. It'll probably run even better once they remove the Nuvo. <laughs> uh, but yes. Speaking of memory things, oh yes. Now, hmm, let me think about that for a moment. Right, so, is it ridiculous to pair a stupidly overpowered GPU with a weak CPU? Yes, that is very silly. You should have a balanced system, but more than just that, what you should definitely have is some decent memory and a decent CPU and you're already in excellent shape because, as you may notice from, uh, I think I closed it, yes. Oh, never you mind, I can pull it right back up. There you go. If we look at these settings, let's do it like that. I'm trying to squish it in there. Oh. What you might find between these settings, and I'll screw up a little just for your convenience, is that while these settings are definitely significantly lower, the problem with these settings is that it takes a lot of fucking finagling to get them there. Because these settings will not definitely work on your system if you try to, <laughs> try to set them up. Because this is specifically two sticks of single rank B die. And I know it's two sticks of eight gigabytes. Yes, that's eight gigabytes, one single rank. Because I have a two slot motherboard. Wow, what a surprise. But if you have like dual rank B die, things change compared to single rank. If you have four sticks, things change compared to having two sticks. If you have dual rank and four sticks, things change yet again. So, uh, these settings that I'm running, they're not guaranteed to work for you. But one funny thing that I've seemingly stumbled upon in regards to Zen 2 and Bidai is that at least with single rank and two DIM modules, then TRAS and TRC can just be dumped straight to the minim minimum values without much of a fucking stability concern. I'm not sure how the fuck that works. And the main issue with it is that if you're occupying all the memory and you suddenly go from occupying all the memory to occupying none of the memory, 
or almost none of the memory, then you can experience a crash <laughs> due to memory management going kaboom. But if you raise them by one over the minimum values, which is to say T RAS goes up to 22 and TRC goes up to 30, then those crashes should mostly go away. <laughs> and TRCDWR, yes, this thing, this fine gentleman usually also goes to the minimum value without much of a hitch. Should probably also work on most things. And what you'll gain from dumpstering <laughs> TRC and TRAS is that it'll give you a pretty nice performance uplift in certain tasks, such as X264 encoding. I'm not sure how the fuck that works. I'm not sure why the fuck it's stable, but it just works, dude. <laughs> I'm not one to question it. And I strongly suspect that some of the more funny things that I have going on is due to the fact that I am, in fact, on a 3600, which humorously has only half the fucking right bandwidth of a chip with two CCDs. Because that's a funny thing they do on Zen 2, is <laughs> have the CCDs control the fucking write speeds. I will write pipeline something something. Anyhow. So if you go to a 3900X or 3950X, it might not work. But what's the point? Well, the point... <laughs> the grander point is that besides those funny little gotchas that I mentioned that might be free performance if you roll the same config as I where you can dumpster these things f f for essentially free although I think this gentleman goes down pretty much regardless of what then if you use good old DRAM calculator, Ryzen DRAM calculator as it's formally called, then you're most of the way there to a decent setup because... Blah, 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 blah. There. Compared to auto settings, uh, those settings are actually pretty okay. Uh, and they're not perfect, they're not like... You've spent a month squishing those down each night because you were bored and shit and <laughs> you can run tests overnight. Surprise, surprise. That's how you do it. I mean, uh, why the fuck would I use my one and only system for memory overclocking and just have it running forever? If I'm supposed to be doing something on that system, no, that's not what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the things that I wanna do. Save a profile of my memory settings, or rather all my settings, in my BIOS. And then I'm gonna start squishing some settings. Seeing if I post, if I don't post, I reload my settings and don't fuck with those settings anymore. And try fucking with some other settings that might budge. Until we reach a point where no setting budges. However, once a setting budges and you don't feel like screwing around too much anymore, it's been mostly stable in terms of the memory test i.e. it passes a couple of minutes <laughs> then once you get to a certain once you're satisfied with your progress for today when you're 
already doing it late at night before bed then what you do is that you try to go to sleep and that takes a while maybe so you keep a little eye on the memory test if the memory test bombs out after 20 ish minutes then well you can try undoing some of the things you just screwed around with until you run the memory test and it runs and it runs and then you fall asleep and you wake up to this and it's like okay i'm saving that profile now and then you do your things or if you didn't do it successfully you reload the profile you had from yesterday before you fucked around with your memory settings and continue on doing things as it's still stable at those settings then you try to fuck with some mud some settings some more the next the following night and, and then you repeat all this fucking process until you get your memory settings down to a certain level that you're satisfied with which in my case is <laughs> a set of settings that's only stable <laughs> at 1.57 volts. Uh, exactly, because any less, it's horribly unstable anymore. It's horribly unstable. And the reason it's even stable the first time is because there's a funny quirk with proc ODT, which is that going from a significantly higher, such as 53.3 to a significantly lower, I don't know, there's a, there's a numerical difference between those, there's more than just a few fucking points, okay? Then what happens is that if you go from 53.3 to something like 32, then you can technically drop a fucking a tenth of a fuck no, a hundredth of a volt and it'll t almost be the same. And that's exactly what brought me to <laughs> stable set of settings. It's pretty dialed in, I'll give it that. Took a while. <laughs> so then. To recap. There's nothing silly about using... A strong CPU with a strong GPU, but Jesus fucking Christ, dude, get some fast memory, and with DRAM calculators, you'll be most of the way there, and with BDI, those settings are fairly safe in my experience. They should probably fucking work without much hassle. God damn it. And then... You won't be fucking running retard settings that choke like crazy. No, you'll be running much better settings. Because here's a fun thing about those settings here. There's a significant amount of time here where you're dipping below 144 hertz. Whereas here, your minimums are 144 hertz. And I can't recommend a 240Hz monitor at the moment because most games find it absolutely fucking impossible to hold those frame rates. Oh, uh, excluding Doom 5, because uh, that game actually runs well for once. <laughs> oh, and uh, here's a bonus section. Once you're done with your fucking, I'ma get a decent-ish CPU, and I'ma get a decent-ish GPU, and have some nice performance that way. This, this funny boogeyman they call the input latency, and you may actually have noticed that I'm running a certain thingy-mabop in Doom 5, which is... For those very fucking eagle-eyed when I scroll through the settings. And yes, connecting to 
Bethesda.net, which is not to be confused with Battle.net. But yes, you may have noticed that I'm not running those two fucking filters. And why is that? Well, that's because it mildly improves input latency. And you may also have noticed that I wasn't running their funny anti-aliasing, because that too mildly impacts input latency. However, however, if you don't feel like ticking around with all these settings for mild fucking gains, then here's a funny one for you, if you're using Windows, because if you're on Linux, then you can, I don't know, get a funny kernel or something and do a native compile on it <laughs> so you have a funny customized kernel <laughs> that is also natively compiled for your hardware that's what we call the fun zone but if you're on Windows you don't get such things however as a funny thing I might even post a link to a funny little post I did about it. But, there's a funny thing. Which is the interrupt affinity policy. What the fuck is that? Well, what that is, is that it determines what fucking CPU core is responsible for handling the interrupt requests of a certain device. And in this case, the device we're looking for is our little GPU. You can also fuck around with this thing, but it's like not as important. I mean, it might do a mild improvement. Like, who the fuck cares, dude? The point here is that on an RDNA GPU, which is the only place I could confirm it, because I don't have a Turing GPU, cough, 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 and on NVIDIA GPUs, you might even have to get this funny little tool, and then make sure this thing is enabled on your GPU, as long as it's a Maxwell or newer GPU, which you should have by now, by the by. It's probably a good idea, but on our DNA GPUs, I can certainly confirm to you that going in here, finding it in the funny list, then going in here and setting it on a funny CPU core that is most definitely not CPU zero, because here's a fun one for you. Where do you think Windows defaults to handling the interrupt requests from all these things? Why, well, it's... It's not whatever core is least busy right now. No, it's all on CPU zero. Of course. And do you know where all the background tasks are on the system? It's CPU zero. And do you know where even <laughs> legitimate single core programs from 2005 are? First and foremost, well, they're, naturally, if all of these things are on CPU zero, then this is also probably on CPU zero. Fucking dude. The sh scheduler might improve in Windows, but ultimately, I mean, it's an improvement, not a staggering overhaul. The perfect scheduler. Ooh, 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 I. No, it's an improvement. <laughs> it's, uh, so. Between all that rambling, you go in here, you press the funny thing, despite the fact that it's gonna tell you this shit, cause guess what, it's from 2007, so it's <laughs> not exactly up to sp a date with modern systems, but it still works. Then you set it to a less busy CPU core. Click OK. Restart the device. Maybe even restart your damn system. And then ooga booga. 
the GPU is suddenly a little bit faster. Actually, a noticeable amount faster at getting the frames to your monitor. Hooray. And what did that cost you? It cost you absolutely fucking nothing. It's even easier than whacking in settings from DRAM calculator. And it does have some impact. But you know what's better than either of those things? It's both at once. Ha <laughs> ha. So yes. To recap, recap, recap. You get a decent CPU. Don't splurge out on the GPU if your main concern is not cinematic OLED experiences, but playing video games. Maybe, no, actually, definitely do some funny things if you get an RDNA GPU. And most importantly, don't be a fool running trash memory settings get some good memory it'll last you a while and whack in some nice settings for it maybe push it a little and you won't be quite at the level that my memory is currently performing but you'll be most of the way there and that's still a lot better than if you did nothing at all. A lot better. There's a significant difference between getting noticeable stutters at 144 hertz and having a minimum frame rate above your display's refresh rate. Because, yeah, it won't be like absolutely flawless because it's running at a fully consistent frame time and uh, there's some technical ooga booga you can you could probably do to just completely wipe off this problem and no it's not just handling the input <laughs> without it being tied to the frame rate no that's not the only thing but there's still a massive difference between getting noticeable stutters and only just having it be slightly less responsive, but not visually distracting. And fun thing is, is that despite me being on a 240 hertz monitor, Shit like this, it's, I don't actually notice the game chugging. And believe me, coming from a Haswell system on a powerful, powerful i5-4690K, with that them there, 2133 CL9 memory, oh, oh my, so speedy. Oh. Without manually tuning the settings because it's a massive pain in the ass when there's barely any material and most importantly not a funny little tool available where you can just go in and see what the memory settings are at currently and write them down and try to crank them down if the fucking bios doesn't show them which it didn't on my board that was very cool the ddr3 board may i add <clears throat> my current one is actually pretty okay how about that so yes coming from ddr3 that i couldn't really tune to shit and to my 3600, that's a 6 core 12 thread instead of 4 core 4 thread i5. Thank you, Intel. You're such, you're fucking wonderful. <laughs> then on this system, there's a world's fucking difference between how playable the game is because despite these funny frame time graphs, which 
you shouldn't actually fully trust because I've actually run a test on my 3700X back when it fucking worked <laughs> and didn't just spontaneously bust a nut on a fucking pin then I tested the 3700X with and without SMT on because some crazy people claim that SMT off gives you better responsiveness. And what did I see? Well, I'll tell you what I saw. If better responsiveness means lots of micro stuttering, then yeah, that was most definitely the case. But what's more imp interesting is that I also ran frame time tests between the two setups, i.e. SMT on and SMT off, and shockingly enough, all those micro stutters that I could visually see occurring on my monitor, yeah? They weren't there on the frame time graph. If you were to believe the frame time graphs between SMT on and off, they would be exactly the same maybe even favored in SMT off <laughs> due to a slight increase in frequencies due to the nature of how SMT works and its effect on temperature which affects the boosting frequencies of your fucking Zen 2 CPU blah 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 uh, if you were to trust the frame time graph, then you might be fooled into thinking that SMT off did not in fact cause the game to be much less playable than SMT on. <laughs> so don't trust fucking frame time graphs, at least ones that are software. Because you could likely set up a frame time capture where you you have a high speed camera literally fucking filming your monitor and you have like a vapor sense script or something set up so that the camera feeds another system that's running a script and this script determines the amount of frames that have passed since the last rendered frame that was visibly different from the previous frame while also accounting for the recording errors of the camera which would be quite tricky but I'm sure the folks at Doom 9 would figure something out if you asked them about it if they're still around that is uh, it's been so long since I actively fucked around with that place. Uh. But yes, if you were to set up a hardware frame time capture like that, you would spot these micro stutters. But currently, using software, so frame time capturing, such as this Cap Frame X program, which is okay, I guess. Yeah, those things, they won't actually reveal the real, real picture. They might fool you into thinking some things. However, I'll, s I'll tell you one thing, and that is that there's a noticeable difference when playing between these settings and these settings, regardless of the fact that they might not always be completely trustworthy. They're still somewhat trustworthy. So to conclude all of this shit. If you're planning on high refresh gaming, you need a fast CPU, yes. You need a decent dish GPU, not even necessarily highly overkill, because most likely you're gonna dumpster some settings anyhow, so who the fuck cares? doesn't make a huge difference, honestly. And most importantly, you're not gonna see a massive improvement in fucking high refresh gaming going from a 
3700X to a 3800X to a 3950X to a fucking 9900K. The clock to 5.99 gigahertz. Uh, no, you're not actually gonna see a massive improvement from those things. If you don't have fucking Speedy Gonzalez memory. Cause that's the actual fucking performance bottleneck these days. I'm not sure where the myth comes that memory is not important for performance. Actually, I might know when that came around. It's probably back when GPUs were fucking ass at running games. And Sandy Bridge was the hot new shit on the street. And nobody fucking dealt in frame time graphs and like, what the fuck are the lows in this thing? No, we're dealing in the average frame rate of like 80-ish. Ooh, holy fuck, dude, that's speedy. Memory doesn't affect shit on the average fucking frame rate. I mean, just look at that, dude. The average goes from... 235 to 238 holy hell dude that's like fucking nothing who the fuck cares about the fire between the two there's still the occasional fucking visual stutter and the speedy setting not having any at all <coughs> yeah that probably doesn't matter does it now <laughs> no dude what matters is that we got Four fucking frames on average, or barely one percent, dude. That's not worth it, dude. Not worth the effort, Kappa, dude. Oh, and Sandy Bridge is not that fast, actually. Isn't <laughs> too close it out the water by now. You should really get a 3600X. They're so fucking cheap these days. Or at the very least, get a. 1600 AF box. Because those are dirt cheap. And Zen Plus is a perfectly respectable CPU architecture. And then, since you cheap the fuck out on a CPU, what you can do is that you reinvest the money you saved from. Not going with the 3600, but instead a 1600 AF box, which is actually a 2600, it's clocked slightly low, that you can still overclock to mostly the same fucking clock speeds. You can use the money you saved going with that processor to get some good memory, yes. You can watch Bill Zoid's videos on how the fuck to spot good memory. And then, you'll most likely go up to these memory speeds-ish. And so, you find whatever the fuck works here. And then you run those settings, and then when you upgrade in the future, the future, you can, like, I don't know, run some faster memory settings. It'll still fucking work two or three years down the line. And it'll have been worth it, because fast memory is very, very important. And the difference between going with good memory, I'm not going to say it's fucking excellent, because there's a good chance that if people were to actually fucking bother improving upon the potential timings of DDR4, You'd likely get something better than b -Dye, but nobody really fucking cares. And the difference between pretty much everything fucking else and b -Dye is pretty significant. It's very significant, in fact. And the price difference is not so significant. The difference between a 3600 that costs like... 170 euro these days and a 3900x that costs like 430 euros these days the difference between those if you have trash memory 
is not as huge as the difference between a 3600 with speedy ass memory and a 3900X with trash memory. In fact, the 3600 is probably going to give you the better gaming experience overall. Because I said memory is actually the bottleneck. <laughs> but the average frame rate will probably be higher on the speedier CPUs. Blah, blah, blah. Who the fuck cares about the average frame rate? I can stare at the ground. Yes, it's very useful. But if you swing around, then you're gonna get lots of lows. And you want those lows to be as close as possible to the average. Because that means you don't notice it fucking chugging along. No, it just sort of goes. If you're, you're really lucky, then it just fucking goes, dude. <laughs> you don't notice anything. Rambling about Ram, eh? Yes. How funny. How fucking funny. So, in essence, what am I saying? Get some good fucking Ram, dude. It's not hard. It's not hard with Ryzen DRAM calculator. It gives you safe settings. It's most of the way there. It just almost fucking works. And it's so fucking worth it. Jesus Christ. Stop saying to pair 9900 case to the 2080 Ti, dude. You're fucking bananas if you think that. This CPU goes for that GPU. No, actually. Actually. What's important is that your memory is fast first and foremost, because that's what's going to determine how pleasant it is to play. And then you can worry about whether or not you should get a CPU upgrade or a GPU upgrade. Oh, and fun fact, there's not much of a fucking RAM upgrade once you're at B-Die, because... Well, that's apparently how it is. It's a very sad state of affairs, but nobody seems to want to improve upon b die or make something better. So you're mostly stuck once you get there. I mean, you could get dual rank b die and get all the sweet, sweet multi rank benefits if, <laughs> if you're willing to go through the efforts of overclocking fucking. <laughs> <laughs> many ranks of b die and shit because that's not as trivial as like 2x8 or 2x16 or 4x8 and... anyhow get some fucking speedy memory dude you can worry about all the other things at a later date when things are both faster and cheaper have a good one.